Okay, uh, hi everyone, so it's SmithyQ, SmithyQ.com, and welcome to the next installment of the opening survey. And today we're going to look at everything um, against d4, d5, but where white does not play c4, um, the Queen's Gambit. These have normally been dismissed and been called as, you know, the d4 deviations. That's what I'm going to be calling this video, the deviations, but they're not really they, many of these are basically main lines at this point they're played just as much as the regular queen's gambit um, at the club level and the amateur level they are played probably even more and i hesitate somewhat to actually make this video because it's rather annoying finding people who play you know these are essentially system openings the london system the call system the zucker tour the, the Tripod, all these openings um white is often able to play completely on autopilot for the first few moves and get a pretty decent position. And it's rather annoying uh, when you, especially if you're playing, you know, an hour of blitz, say, and every single white player plays the exact same thing. It's like, come on, guys, there's <laughs> so many different positions that are possible. But this is exactly why. These systems, uh, they're, they're sound. They're often very, very solid. Um, white often gets a clear plan, a clear line of attack, Whereas black sometimes, often doesn't, in all honesty. And so these can be very effective. There's no denying that. And so I'm hoping I'm not going to popularize these any more than they are. To get started with, I want to just look at what these systems... Because often they can be played with different move orders, and again, they can be played no matter what black does. So let's just look at a few, um, a few of them, and we can see a couple of the main ideas about them. So to start off with, this here is uh, everyone's favorite opening and or least favorite opening, it's the London system. And you can see pretty clearly, um, Simon Williams calls this the, uh, the triangle. What, white has a very solid center. Um, pieces are all developed very, very, pretty much on their best squares that are possible. Maybe this knight wants to be on c3, but if the knight's on c3, then the pawn can't be at c3. And, and by having this triangle of pawns, white just has a very solid center. Um, very hard to get to, uh, to break down at this point. And white has some pretty stable plans, in all honesty. If I just delete the, uh, the colors, white could play with an eventual c4 and open up on the queen side. That's possible, with or without these pawns coming. White can play for e4, and maybe eventually e5. That's always possible. Playing e4, um, of course, gives him complete control of the center. Um, white can also play for an eventual king side attack, something like this. All this is great. Um, and also, because white has very firm control over e5, white can attempt to play in the center by doing so, you know, possibly with e4, e5, or without, and just there. So that is, in general, just a couple of uh, nice points about the London system. This bishop is often extremely powerful, um, controlling this diagonal, making it very irritating for, um, for black. And it's so irritating that white will often play h3, just so we can move this bishop all the way back, and it's perfectly safe. And especially at, the, I've seen this so often in the 14 to 1500 range, is people, black players, will forget this bishop is here, and they'll put a rook on b8, and then they just lose the rook. And so uh, don't forget about the London bishop. Now, if we compare that with this, this would be uh, what's known as the Stonewall attack. And it's almost identical. The difference is there's a pawn here instead of the bishop. And so what that means is white has uh, superb control over um, e5, very hard to break down, very solid center, and the kingside attacking ideas are very, very common. You can imagine something like this. Knights are going to come like this. Bishop again is aiming straight at the king. Queen wants to come over here. There's also pawn storm assault ideas. And so white can think about playing g4, g5, f4, f5. That's very common. Or moving the knight, and then the rook can slide up, trying to deliver mate this way. Um, this setup, um, I've always found extremely irritating to play. Extremely irritating to play against. Uh, um, historically, my record against it is terrible. It's not very common. Uh, much more common in Internet Blitz, I found, since I started playing Blitz. Uh, but the real joy of this is because the center is so solid, there's no real danger for white of getting you know crushed in the center. 
black is often playing on the queen side, and that means white has a free hand of just throwing himself at the king side. So this can be an extremely powerful opening um, in the right hands. If we move over, uh, again, this is almost identical. This is now uh, the call system, or the call E system. I, have, I honestly don't know how it's pronounced. It's almost the exact same thing as the others, but we'll notice that instead of an f-pawn or a bishop over here, the bishop is still here. And so in some ways, this appears to be the worst version of all the systems, but that's not completely true. Because white um, has not spent a tempo playing f4 or bishop f4, and so white actually achieves this position one tempo faster, which means white can start his attacks one tempo faster. In particular, e4 can be much more powerful because A, it's happening sooner, because again, it's one tempo faster. And it also opens up this bishop here. If you imagine the London system, so let me just uh, imagine the bishop's over here. Playing e4 is nice, but it's only nice. It doesn't actually do much. Whereas here, when we play e4, like that, we are opening the position up for, for um, the bishop. And again, because it comes sooner, it can have more of a devastating effect on black, especially if black isn't prepared. And so um, the call system, or the calling system, it's pretty much the same thing. He has the same, um, uh, the exact same setup, the same solid foundation, but with the ability to playing um, e4 in a much more tactical, aggressive manner. And by far, this opening is made famous by the, the what's known as the Greek gift sacrifice, or bishop takes h7. And out of all of these, this is the opening that tends to have this sacrifice the most. Again, just because it's not wasting time with f4 or bishop f4, and so the attacks just come that much faster. Um, yeah, and then I think there's just one more. Yes, here we go. And this here is essentially the same thing. Um, but instead of the pawn on c3, the pawn's on b3, and the bishop's on b2. So compared to all everything else, there's two extra tempi that um, need to be uh, made to get this position like this. But we can see like the advantages. is The bishop is staring at the king, this bishop's staring. We can see how everything wants to go there. And this can be an extremely powerful weapon. But it's not just that. It can also be a very powerful positional weapon. If white ever plays c4, and you imagine there's an exchange here, it's possible to take back with the knight, because the knight's on d2. And we've got this very solid structure coming in this way. We can, you, you can play on the c file, or we can play on the queen side. You can see how, just imagine that's a better arrow. Things well. And I found this always to be a very underrated system. And it's uh, fortunate that the London system is so popular, and this seems to be a less popular system. But again, it's all the same king side attacking ideas. White also has the idea, of course, of eventually playing, I guess, put on the board, by playing d5, because that will open up absolutely everything. And so you can see how naturally things are going to the king side. So all that is white. And um, so it's fairly simple, fairly thematic. If you were to study five master games, or even just classic games in these various systems, you know almost all of the ideas. And so you can learn this very, very quickly. It's very thematic. The same ideas come up again and again and again. It doesn't really matter what black does. Things are awesome. And so, again, in terms of the amount of study time you need to do, it's very, very minimum. And again, the same tactics appear all the time, so that is absolutely fantastic. That said, you're also for that very reason they're so popular and they're so easy to learn, you're likely going to face them as black. Now, I don't want to get this um, idea that these openings are like super great for white and everyone should play with them. Because again, that's... <laughs> um, in most of these openings, black is at least equal, but it's often easier for white to play and that can be a problem. That said, there are certain black setups that you can use in order to just not give white such an easy time. Uh, if I were to just bring up, let me go back to one. Let's look at the Stonewall attack in particular. So what are the main ideas for white in this position? And this, again, applies for most of these. Often it's to get a knight to e5, and the bishop takes h5 sacrifice. Sorry, bishop takes h7 sacrifices. These are the main ideas of these openings. These are what white wants to do when he plays these openings. So that suggests, as black, we should do something to try and restrict that. 
Because if white does not have easy access to e5 or an easy line with the bishop takes h7 um, sacrifices, Sorry, so if white does not have this easy access to these um, two ideas, then often white doesn't really know what to do and then you'll be okay. And so this tells us the main things that we want to focus on as black. Well, let me just bring it up actually. It's basically this. And so I, there's three ideas in this, but I know it's just three moves. If you can get a pawn on d6, then that means black, white does not have easy access to put a knight e5. And that instantly makes an opening like the Stonewall attack much, that takes away one of the main ideas. And second, we know white wants to put a bishop here, so we can then sacrifice something, you know, on h7 or attack that way. And so there's two common ideas for white, uh, sorry, for black. One is to play g6, because if there's a pawn on g6 and there can be no sacrifices, right, the pawn's in the way. And secondly, um, the second option would be to put the bishop on f5. Um, you don't even, right? Because if the bishop's on f5, and white tries to put a bishop there, you can just exchange it. And without the white squared bishop, white doesn't really have an attack. So, that, that's all the generalities. So if we were to actually look at some concrete lines here, and I'm, I'm going to do it extremely generally, in all honesty, is we can imagine knight f6, uh, knight f3, knight f6, e3. And so this is the beginning of the call system. And if you're to look up theory, the most common move is actually e6, which I find to give white exactly what he wants. Because after bishop to d3, right, where the bishop is going to come in here, and for one, black, um, by playing one d5, that means he can't put a pawn on d6, so white has access to d5. He's blocked his bishop, so his bishop can't come out, so there's no opposing this bishop. And it doesn't really make sense to play g6 in this position because... Um, the dark squares are so incredibly weak all around, right? Because if this, um, because if this, let me just make a move, right? Because if the bishop comes here, well then, you know, these squares are very weak. Imagine a bishop finally come to g5, that's a very annoying pin. And of course, the exact same thing, if a bishop comes here, it become that. So this is really what may have we saying, by playing this for black, even though it's considered the main line, it gives white exactly what he wants. And even though the position is equal and it's even and sure, why not? White gets everything. And so we shouldn't, like, uh, we shouldn't do that. And so what are two uh, possibilities? A whole bunch of possibilities, really. Again, you could play with g6 and bishop g7. That's certainly possible. Alternatively, we've got, sorry, wrong move order. Bishop f5 immediately. Right, just stopping everything there. Another possibility would be to play bishop to g4. And we're not going to exchange there if white were to ever chase us. Right? That's fine. The bishop ends up coming here anyway, and maybe we can play h5 to soften him up. And things are okay. And we don't need to be worried too much. Let's imagine, you know, white were to do something like this, and he exchanges. This is perfectly fine. Because if he tries to put his bishop on d3, again, he can't sacrifice it on h7. This is, um, our pawn structure is weakened, but it's not really weakened in terms of the attack, uh, the, the classic attack. White would need to do something like start throwing his pawns up this way. But if white is busy attacking over here before we've even castled, maybe we don't castle that way. Maybe we leave our rook sitting right there. Things are pretty happy. Uh, we could leave our king in the center, maybe think about castle and queen side because nothing's happening over there. And so those are some of the options for black. And I want to highlight that just because so many resources are given towards what white should be doing, because again, these are very club level, very popular amateur levels. Like, what do you do as black? And that, that is, uh, especially if you play against the, uh, the one d5, um, again, either g6 or bishop f5 at some point, uh, getting the bishop onto this diagonal is going to really restrict what white can do, which is nice. If you respond to one d4 with knight f6, this gives you more options. As, you know, if, you, if, if you play the king's Indian, let's say, you're able to get almost everything um, that you want. 
right? Because we have we have the pawns here. We're controlling this, and uh, we could, we could even put the bishop on f5 if we really, really wanted to. All that's nice. I know I talked a lot about the white plans, about trying to attack, and I've only really talked about how black is able to counter those plans. The unfortunate part is that in many of these openings, because white is so solid, it's actually hard for black to um, get guaranteed play. And it's more along the ideas of, generally, uh, is playing c5, and often he's able to get you know ideas with queen b6, bishop b, sorry. Hold on one second. Okay, so um, just the two general ideas for... So the first thing I just want to mention is, again, White has these very thematic ideas, these very thematic attacks. And so the first thing you really want to do as Black is stop that. Because if you can stop White from doing these things, then it's just an even position, and then the better player is going to win. Or it'll be a draw because it's a boring position. But that's the idea. And so stopping White's thematic ideas is extremely important it's extremely powerful and as black against these systems in my opinion at least that really should be your first priority that said the two main ideas that black has is either expanding on the king side or expanding in the center let's look at them both we'll start with the center so for instance if you look at the main line um, the call position uh, where we play e6 often c5 okay so we can see in this position, um, white is ready to expand out with e5, but so is black. And here, playing e5 is very, very nice. It's very useful. And it's really um, black beating white to the punch. Um, the threat is e4, forking these guys, since there has to be an exchange. Usually, it's something like this. The bishop can slide all the way back, and black's okay. Again, the bishop can come out this way to interpose, the knight can jump into e4, and things are happy, rook e8, and absolutely no problems uh, for black in this position. So that's great, right? Woohoo! So you can expand the center, uh, finish your development, things are fine. In many of the systems, for instance, if white plays the London system, he controls e5 so much that it's really, really hard to um, get that break in. Um, certainly not easily. And so often, um, this is where the second idea comes in, and this is also true in the Stonewall attack, and any other system in which e5, e5 is impossible, is often, I don't know if you'll do this exact move, but ideas like queen b6 coming in, um, this works especially well against in the London and other systems where the bishop already moves, just because, well, the pawn's undefended, and so white needs to be careful about that. Also possible um, would be eventually playing, locking the place down with c5, b4, and then b5, and we're just really expanding on the king side, and, uh, sorry, on the queen side. And this can work really, really well because black will have a space advantage and black will have the initiative there. But if black is entirely focused over here on the queen side, whereas white is getting his um, normal bishop d3 and queen a and his getting attacked on the king side, things can go very, very badly for black. This is why, um, again, if you can stop white's attack first, you just don't give him anything, you then have free reign over there on the queen side. And again, one of the, uh, in the London in particular, these pawns, that's great because the bishop's very, very active, but it also means the bishop can't come back and defend anywhere. And so if there's nothing happening on the king side, and all the action is being pressured down here on the queen side, the bishop actually can't help. And so even though the bishop is active, it's actually, it's technically a bad bishop, and there are positions, there are certain end games, and where the bishop is active, but it can't actually do anything, it can't actually help, and black um, is able to get past pawns on the queen side, and things are fine. Like, for black, uh, that is. And so, general ideas. It's a lot, it's actually harder to think of the general ideas for black, or I mean, they're extremely general. It's queenside pressure. Like, that isn't the, the most helpful thing in the world. So in practice, again, it's ideas like queen b6. It, um, let me just delete some of these arrows. Um, flow, got it. Queen b6, annoying white. 
potentially with ideas of c5 and if the queen moves again you know to uh, prepare b5 b4 um, you know e6 get the bishop out and again trying to get a bishop to f5 or to g4 and just not letting white get that easy easy attack so those are the deviations. Now, I haven't covered everything. There's actually some other deviations I want to cover, but this is getting on too long. Um, for instance, with knight f6, bishop to g5, uh, the Trompowski. There's also the, um, the Tory attack. Maybe I'll do a separate uh, d4 deviations versus the knight f6 move order. Though... There's perhaps less to say about those. Anyway, so I'll, I'll think about that. That is a general overview of these systems. Again, they're extremely interesting. I hesitate to say this, but, you know, as white, they follow all the opening principles. They have clear plans. It's a way of studying chess and not studying theory, so they're definitely a way to go. I would just ask, you know, give me this one thing. Don't be one of those white players that plays the moves automatically. You know, if, if black, you know, is playing poor moves or lets you play e4 in one move, then you should do it, right? Don't just play your moves automatically. Right? Think at least a little bit in the opening. That'd, that'd be great. Otherwise, that's it. I'm going to cut this under half an hour. So smithyq, smithyq.com, smithyq.com. This reading week has killed me. Uh, let me know if you have thoughts, questions, and I'll uh, try another video up shortly. So thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.